everybody hello it is yaracel the multipreneur you know what time it is if you're watching this it's 1 p.m eastern standard time and not only is it 1 p.m eastern standard time but it is 6 p.m in the uk hello to everybody uh who is um watching us from over there I hope everybody had a wonderful weekend. Let me just start off by saying I had a wonderful weekend. It uh, We celebrated my mother's 70th birthday, so it was wonderful. And I just want to thank everybody who came out to support her, those of you who sent cards for her. So it was awesome. Well, let's get this show on the road. If this is your first time watching, I am Yaracel, the multipreneur. Here we talk about money, but we like to talk about money God's way. And we've got to get comfortable talking about money and what we've been talking about um, last week. And we're going to finish up this week. We've been talking about debt. And so we're unpacking debt. This is part two of unpacking debt. If this is your first time watching us on YouTube, welcome. If you like what you hear, press subscribe, hit the like button share it with somebody else who may find this information to be valuable. Okay, so um, last week we started talking about debt and we're gonna just finish unpacking debt today. Um, this is, we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this, um, but today I do want to give you eight things that I want you to keep in mind about money and debt. And so that's what we're gonna talk about for today. How do we start off Money Monday? We started off with a scripture and today's scripture, just like it was last week, Proverbs 22 and seven. And it says, just as the rich rule over the poor, so the borrower is servant to the lender. So what is debt? We already talked about this last time that debt is money that a person is obligated to pay back. That's what debt is. And so what we're going to do is if you missed last week, you can go back and catch the replay. You can look at it. It's on Instagram. It's on YouTube. Uh, what well, I don't think, think it's saved Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook. You can go back and catch the replay for part one on, on, on debt. But today, there are eight things that I want you to keep in mind, have top of mind as it pertains to your money as it pertains to debt. So let's jump right in those things right now. Number one, you need to be committed to paying what it is that you owe. And so let me tell you why that is so important, okay? Um, you just have to do the right thing. I think sometimes um, when, especially like, let's say we have an old debt, and so people are like, just let it drop off or it's been on your credit so long, it doesn't matter anymore. It's not really gonna change your score that much or whatever the case is. You still wanna go ahead and pay the debt because at the end of the day, you wanna do the right things. I think sometimes we don't realize the consequences um, of not making good decisions because of, how we feel like, well, maybe it's not going to super duper affect us today. Right. So, but you still have consequences when you don't do the right thing. You know, the Bible tells us that we should pay that if we borrow money and we don't pay it back, it's a wicked thing. Right. Um, so I just want to read some to you guys, Proverbs 3, 27 and 28, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to act. Do not say to your neighbor, Come back tomorrow. I'll give it to you when you already have it with you. I know if you're a person who was constantly like you lend money to people, as quick as they ask you for that money, you want to be able to get your money back as well. So it's not right to owe people money. Um, and it's not just um, with your friends or your family. It's with your debt collectors as well. It's still not right for you to owe any money, right? So you want to do the right thing as it pertains to money that you owe to people. You want to do the right thing. And I'm going to break it down in a little bit about why it's really, really important for you to do the right thing. <laughs> the second thing we're going to talk about today is cosigning. Don't cosign. 
the majority of statistically, the majority of um, people who co-sign, they end up paying the debt back. Most times when you're in a co-sign type situation, you don't, um, unfortunately, you have good intentions, but a lot of times people get in, get themselves into um, debt that they really can't really pay back. So the Bible really tells us don't co-sign. Um, that comes from Proverbs 17, 18. I'm not going to read that. You can look at it for yourself, Proverbs 17, 18, but don't find yourself in a position to where you, you've co-signed or you're going to co-sign for somebody. Now, let's say you've co-signed and, um, or let's say you're like, dang, y'all, so I'm in a position to where somebody co-signed for me. You know, what do you do about that? I know now. So when you know better, you do better. So what do we do about that situation right now? That, that I'm going to read to you. So um, it's Proverbs 6, 1 and 5. And it says, my son, you know, this is the wisdom of Solomon. Anytime you want to get some wisdom, go look in the book of Proverbs. But my son, if you have put up security for your neighbor, that's that cosign. If you've shaken hands in a pledge for a stranger, you've been trapped by what you said and snared by the words of your mouth. So do this, my son, to free yourself. Since you have fallen into your neighbor's hands, Go to the point of exhaustion and give your neighbor no rest. Allow no sleep to your eyes, no slumber to your eyelids. Free yourself like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter, like a bird from the snare of the fowler. So that was the new, uh, new international version. In other words, what you need to do at this point, try to get that, rectify that situation. It might be time to refinance. So let's say you, you did it with a car. It might be time now for you to, you've been paying the bill. Maybe things are in a better situation. You may need to try to get a new loan, get that, get the um, contract taken care of and be diligent about it, you know, and, and it might be time to talk about it. I've helped you out um, to get you, get you to this point, especially if the person has been doing the right thing, they've been paying the bill. Now it's time to, you know, get your own loan, do a refinance, whatever the case is. The third thing I want you to keep top of mind as it pertains to debt is to get a multitude of counselors, but you just need to make sure that they're wise. We get that from Proverbs 15, 22. I can't tell you how many times I don't, I don't understand why we like to just do things on our own. I know everybody's all independent and all this other stuff right now, but that is rubbish. You want to get yourself around a, a wise multitude of counselors. And for some of you, you're like, I can't really look to my left and my right, and I don't really have a lot of good, wise counsel. And if that is the case, you're not really around good people who can help you, um, you know, as it pertains to good advice and stuff like that. When it comes to your money, then you might need to get yourself an expert to kind of help you with that type of thing. So one of the things that I tell people all the time is, okay, if you're in a position to where um, you are um, needing some advice, but you're needing advice on something that you're not familiar with, then you've got to go and get yourself an expert or somebody who can help you. You, you don't just go to your friend or your neighbor when you got to go to the doctor. You go to the expert. Um, for some of you, you don't do your own taxes. You go to the accountant. You know, it's OK for you to use somebody who is skilled in something else to help you with what it is that you need. So I strongly urge you to get yourself in a mode of counselors. That way um, you are you know, you're getting the best and the wisest advice as it pertains to your money. Financial literacy is not something you can just pick up and rock and roll with immediately, um, unfortunately, especially it, it takes time to really learn these things. So get with somebody who is wise, who can help you an expert so that you can get yourself together. And for some of us, you might need, honestly, you may need a different type of counsel. For some of you, it's more of a discipline thing. You might need a coach, a life coach. You know, maybe you kind of understand the financial principles and stuff like that, but maybe you need, you lack the discipline or something like that. So they have really good business coaches and life coaches. And some of you, your wise counsel is going to come from a counselor. Maybe you need somebody to help you to unpack your past hurts and, and, the, and the past things that you've had to go through. So whatever it is that you need, 
get yourself the help that you need. The fourth thing that I want you to be um, to have for you to have top of mind is that you want to be honest. You want to choose blessings over your curses. And so let me explain what that means. When you are honest, especially as it pertains to money and dealing with money type situations, number one, you're going to be close to the Lord. Your family will be blessed. You'll have long life and you'll have prosperity. How do I know these things? Because they're God's promises to us. I got that from Proverbs 3, 32. Proverbs 20 and 7, Proverbs 12 and 19, and Proverbs 15 and 6. So for those of you who are, you know, on Facebook or um, YouTube, you can see this on the screen. But yeah, so that's what you want. You want to, you want the blessings over the curses. You, you want to be close. You want your family to be blessed. You want long life. You want prosperity, right? What's the opposite of that? The opposite is no intimacy with the father family problems, death, and poverty. Where did I get that from? Proverbs 3 and 32, Proverbs 15, 27, Proverbs 21 and 6, Proverbs 13, 11. I do want to read something to you guys because I love it. This is the Amplified version. He who profits unlawfully brings suffering to his own house, but he who hates bribes and does not receive nor pay them will live. Proverbs 15, 27. So you don't want to just bring about any kind of, you want the blessings in your family, you want the blessings for yourself. So it's really important that you choose the blessings, don't choose the curses. And the reason that I say choose is decisions. Everything we do is based on decisions. The fifth thing to keep top of mind is just don't be afraid to give while getting out of debt. We could totally do a whole entire like session on giving. Um, I'm coming from Acts 20, 35. But we're not doing that today. But sometimes you feel like, oh, I got this debt. I can't really give. I can't really help. I can't really do any of those things. But I'm just going to tell you, you can. Um, we talked about in when we talked about giving, we talked about um, Paul's five or four P's that when you give, it should be personal. It should be periodic. It should come from some type of private place and it should be premeditated. Right. And so. I just want to give you a couple of um, tips about that. Number one, um, it's okay for you to take care of your family, but you just don't need to become an enabler. And so, you know, we get that from 1 Timothy 5, 8. The Bible tells us, you know, you it's the wrong thing to do to not help your family, but you don't want to be the person who um, is being used. <laughs> you don't want to be used. And you don't want to be a person who, keeps people from moving forward because you're always just, you know, you're playing God. You're trying to be their God instead of letting God be who he is. So you don't want to become an enabler, but you definitely want to be, it's okay for you to help your family. It's okay to give to your church. You know, a lot of people these days, I'm not giving no money to no pastor and all this other stuff. And, and these pastors are still and, and da, 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 da. it's true, but a lot of people still and, you know, not just certain pastors and not all pastors and not all churches are stealing or whatever the case is. So it's OK for you to give to the church. And some people will tell you, you don't need to be giving right now because you in debt. I remember one time I was so broke. I just I had no money and I was going to church and everything like that. And I just was struggling. But I would give anything, even if I had to put some change in the offering. You know what I'm saying? And the Lord will bless you. So don't believe the hype with with all of that oh, I, you don't have to give no money that's just not that's not true you know it is more blessed to give than to receive period another thing too is a lot of people feel like we shouldn't be taking care of the poor i don't understand where that comes from at all um where i mean i'm coming from matthew 25 34 and 35 and i really want you to read that but um you know the, we are we are here to sell to serve and help one another. We are here to not help one another. Um, if you look at Proverbs twenty eight and seven, it says, "Those who give to the poor will lack nothing, but those who close their eyes to them receive many curses." I mean, we are really designed to live in community with one another. I mean, what's the head without the neck? You know, and what's the fingers? Um, you know, without the arm? You know, 
So we are designed to be here, to be there for one another, to help one another. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know this whole new, it's me, myself, and I. We actually were designed and created for community. And so it's okay for us to be there and help one another. And honestly, a lot of people wouldn't be in the situation that they're in if we all would come together as one. You know, we would get some wonderful, wonderful things done. So um, it's okay if you are in a position where you need a little help. Just get yourself out of that situation. And um, and if you are a person that, let's say you are in a solid position to be able to really help somebody, help them. Help them. And then after you help them, you know, you can, you, you might even not even, let's say you don't even help them monetarily. Let's say you just know how they can get help. You know a program that can get them a place to live. You know a, a place that they can go get food. You know a pantry that has food. Whatever, you know where they can get clothes for an interview. Just whatever you can do, just help somebody else. And um, and and don't sit on your knowledge. I mean, that wasn't even part of the, the lesson for today, but... So many people are sitting on knowledge like you actually got help, like you got a down payment to buy your house. You know exactly what to do, but you're you're hoarding that information. You won't help somebody else. So just don't forget that we are we are designed to live in community. The next thing I want you to keep top of mind is to work with excellence. Ecclesiastes nine and um, verse 10 is where I'm getting this from. Work with excellence. You know, so many people, they go to work, they're lazy. They don't want to do nothing. They're stealing from work. I'm like, what in the world? And then you're like, I'm not feeling like I'm being blessed. Like you're not working with excellence. And I'm excellence. And I understand everybody doesn't work for a good boss. Some of these bosses, I'm with you. I, they're not good bosses. I get it. I've worked for people who are not good bosses, but you don't work for them. You don't work for the company. Your work is for the Lord. We get that from Colossians 3 and 23. So always do your work with excellence. The Bible tells us that everything we do, we do it excellent. We're, we are to do it with excellence. And so you are totally equipped. So just make sure that when you're working, you're doing the very best that you can do. Okay. Um, the, the number seven, you want to be able to eliminate your debt with the right mindset. Okay. So there's a couple of things that I want to talk to you about with this. Number one, consider making a new decision after a decision has already been made when your situation changes. So what are you talking about, Yarsel? Let's say you get a new car. Y'all know how I feel about car debt. I feel like buy you a nice used car, call it a day. If you can afford to get something different at the right time, then that's fine. Do it. But other than that, you um, financially... Cars put us in so much debt, it ain't even funny. But we're not talking about it. We're not going to talk about the cars today. But let's say you get the new car because you wanted it. You're like, I can afford it. I can afford this or whatever the case is. Okay, great. But then you lose your job. Consider making a new decision. So you already made the decision to get the car. It might be time to like change some things around. Let's say you bought this house. And you love the house and all that good stuff. But right now, you're really, really struggling to maintain the home or whatever the case is. Consider making a new decision. And, and you don't want to put your... I've been in a position where I've made a decision, got some things, got some debt, whatever. And then my financial situation changed. Well, I was prideful. Instead of me making the decision and making some new changes. Like I got to change this up. I got to, I, I can't do this, or maybe I need to downsize or whatever. I just kept on trying to suffer through that thing. And you don't want to do that. Don't put yourself in a position where you are suffering through something. And we got to get to the point to where we got to stop being embarrassed. We got to get rid of the cloak of shame. We got to get rid of the guilt. And we got to put ourselves in a position where if we make decisions, it's okay to be like, okay, my situation has changed. I need to, I need to flip the script. I need to make, I need to do something different and it's okay to do something different. And if you're around people who are judging you, because that happens sometimes, cut them off. You know, we are not, 
we're not dealing with that. Don't be around people who can't support you. The other thing that you want to do to get make sure you're in the right mindset is you want to create a plan that matches your beliefs. And so let me tell you. So let's say and that's why you have a multitude of counselors. So let's say um, you meet with somebody to work through your um, financial situation. But let's say what they're explaining to you, it doesn't really go with you. It's not a one size fits all type of situation. So you want to make sure that the plan that you have actually matches your beliefs and it's something that you can see through. And so it's kind of like when you're shopping for quotes to get, I don't know, let's say you're trying to get something fixed in your house. I always say, go get yourself three quotes, get yourself three quotes. And it's the same thing. So you may have to shop around and get yourself a plan that matches you. Okay. Does that make sense? So you don't want to be stuck thinking you have to do things one way. Your money situation, getting financially free, it's not a cookie cutter type situation. I think that there are some tips that are timeless, you know, that will stand throughout the end of time. Um, but it's not a cookie cutter situation. You want to get into the plan that really fits your beliefs. The other thing about mindset is you just got to learn to take responsibility. And, um, and that's such a tough thing because um you know sometimes you know you just you want to crawl into bed <laughs> and you don't want to address the situation but you have to do it and you have to take that responsibility and say okay i'm responsible i have a little sign in my office and it says i'm responsible the last thing um that i want you number eight you got to think of debt as an obstacle and not a burden because when you look at it as a burden, you don't, it can stagnate you. It can, um, you know, you can, uh, you stall, you don't get it done. You know, you don't want to look at it as a burden. It's an obstacle. The best thing about obstacles is you can go around them and you can get around them. And so no matter what it is that you're going through, I know it's overwhelming. Um, I was talking to a lady and she and I were going over some stuff and she says when she gets paid and certain bills get paid, she just doesn't like to look at her bank account anymore. She just feels overwhelmed. So I'm just telling you, I understand it's not easy as you're getting yourself out of debt and dealing with finances. It is it can be heavy. But just remember, like what we talked about before, make sure that you're praying, you know, stick to God's plan and just take it one day at a time, you know? You're not a robot, and um, and just take it one day at a time. And you may make mistakes, but you pick yourself back up and you, you, know, you move forward. And just keep trying to do better and keep trying to work and do better. All right, let me just tell you something else too. So for those of you who do not know, my class, The Other 90%, it is a free class now. Uh, we're going to be, we're not doing it like every month, but you need to go to my website. I am the multipreneur.com. You can sign up for that. What this class does for you is it allows you to, um, you've paid your tithes. Now what, what do I do with the rest of this money that I've been stewarded? Right? So you can uh, register for that at I am the multipreneur.com. For those of you um, who are listening or watching, you can use the link in my bio to get to that website. You can register for that. Those of you who are Instagram, uh, who are on Instagram, you can follow me on Instagram at I am the multipreneur. Thank you so much if you're watching on YouTube. And for those of you who are uh, not watching from YouTube, but you are on YouTube, Join me on YouTube. Hit that like button and hit subscribe. Follow me on Twitter as well at The Multipreneur. And I am on TikTok. I love TikTok. It's so fun. My TikTok feed is just wonderful. I guess it's because of what I um, listen to <laughs> and who I follow. But come to TikTok at yourself. You want if you want some positivity, get on TikTok, y'all. Okay. So if anybody um, wants the debt worksheet. You can email me at I am the multipreneur at gmail.com and we'll send you the um, 
the debt worksheet it's uh it's in an excel spreadsheet format but it'll really help you to start looking at your money and telling your money where to go okay all right you guys thanks so much for watching i'll see you guys again next monday i hope everybody has a wonderful week on purpose and i will talk to you soon bye